Hello everyone, Adrian here. I had such a great response on my last video showing off my Royal Ruby dishes that I thought I would do um, sort of an addendum on that and show you some of the other pieces that I have. And then a, a couple of other little um, ruby red glass dishes that are um, a bit of a puzzle to me. Um, so maybe, <laughs> since I have a lot of people who seem to be very interested in it, they would have some ideas on uh, what exactly it is that I have, because I don't actually know. So um, here we go. Um, as I said, most of this were things that you did not see the last time. Um, in a few cases, I brought some of these uh, pieces that you saw before um, just as a useful contrast to the other pieces that I'm showing you. So here are a couple of the larger pieces that I have. Um, I showed you a different large platter that I had. This one is, um, it's actually got the oyster and pearl pattern, if you see those little dots there. I guess those are the pearls. Um, and this is, uh, I think it's 13 and a half inches. So this is a great platter uh, for serving. You know, it's a great thing for like your Christmas cookies or things like that. Um, here is a very large um, oval bowl. This pattern is called Classic. Um, I did show you a large vase that's the same uh, pattern. It has these uh, vertical ribs and then a, like a star-shaped bottom to it. There's also a large platter to this and I think a large round bowl. Um, in this pattern, I don't have all of those. I just have the large vase and this oval. And this here is something that I enjoy a lot. This pattern is called Manhattan um, and these are um, ruby inserts on a relish tray. So they uh, both the the clear glass uh, platter and the inserts have this um, ribbed pattern. So I've seen pictures of this with a clear piece in the middle. Um, I never had that. So I don't know if it's something that came with it and I'm missing it or if mine just was designed without that. So um, this is uh, an oval serving bowl, which is something a little bit unusual. It's got this um, scalloped border on it. Um, I showed you this apothecary jar, the footed one, but actually I have three different apothecary jars. They're all three. They're mixed, clear, and ruby. Um, there's this larger one, a smaller version of that same with the straight sides, then of course the footed one that I showed you already. Now again, this here, um, this was one that I showed you. In fact, I pointed this out as one of the most common vases that you're going to see um, at yard sales or estate sales or things like that. Um, but now this is a much more unusual piece. Um, it's got the same top with these rings and the fluted top, but then instead of the ball bottom, it's got this sort of um, flat area. So this was something interesting. I was very fascinated when I came across this because this one is extremely rare and this one is extremely common. So um, that was kind of fun. Um, Here's another marmalade jar. I know I showed you some marmalade jars and I showed you another one that had a metal um, basket. But this one here is, uh, it has a metal basket, which would have been a different manufacturer, but made to fit with this. And this also comes on a plate. So that's kind of an interesting contrast. This probably should have a little spoon with it. It's got uh, the notched area for it, um, but I, again, I, it didn't come with it when I purchased it, so um, I don't know. It's out there somewhere, I'm sure. <laughs> so um, this is another vase with a ruffled top, but I'll get to that in a minute. Um, this is one of the classic ice buckets. Um, this again is is somewhat rare, and 
this is one of the few instances where I picked this up even though there is some problems with it. So um, this has a couple of chips right around where the metal handle attaches to the glass. And um, also there's supposed to be a set of tongs that goes on here, which again, I never had. Um, I tend not to pick up things that have chips in them just because, you know, if it's something that I want to actually use, you know, the last thing I want is something chipped on the rim of a glass and somebody gets cut. Um, you know, we don't want anything like that. But as I said, this is um, an unusual piece. It's not that common to find these ice buckets. Um, so I picked this up even though it is not perfect. So. Um, here's another instance of a uh, vase. I think I showed you this one the last time. Um, it's kind of a pineapple shaped tall vase. And I wanted to just point out this. This is really interesting that this one has a smooth one and then they came back, made the same pattern again, but with this scalloped top on it. So I think that's really interesting that you've got those variations. And um, this is another instance, um, they call these round uh, ones, they called ivy ball vases. Um, this one, as you can see, it actually has a candle in it. And I think, um, given that it still has the paper label, I suspect that the candle was actually sold with it. Um, because of course, if you were filling it after the fact, you probably would have washed it and or lost this label. So. Um, that was just an interesting thing to, <laughs> to point out in this one. Same size, same shape. Difference here is just these edges. This has a smooth edge. This has this scalloped edge, which I think is interesting too that they do this. Here's just a, a selection of some small scallop topped vases. Um, this one's kind of fun, this little squat. Uh, shape um, and that's just kind of a little variety a taller one but very small bud vases usually you'd call this um, these were actually called bud vases in the catalog um, although they look kind of like cruets to me but um, they are considered a vase so um, and this is another thing that is an odd shape but it's considered a vase so um, Sorry, that's a little dusty, isn't it? <laughs> um, that is an, I thought, an unusual shape, but also I wanted to <laughs> say that's the goofiest thing, I think. They call this, um, they say there's an alternate name called a female spittoon for that shape. I'm not sure. So anyway, um, and this is just another one. This is kind of an unusual um I don't know if this is meant to be a tumbler or a vase, um, but I, I kind of like that shape. So, so here are my puzzles. <laughs> um, the first one is this cocktail shaker that I have. Now the color looks pretty good to be Royal Ruby, um, but Royal Ruby has a number of cocktail shakers um, the Anchor Hawking Company made. And none of them are shaped like this. Um, they all have like straight sides. They don't have this sort of a hip here. Um, and also the, the lid, the metal lid on the top for the ones that I've seen in the catalogs are uh, kind of flatter. This has got a real domed shaped lid. So, oh, and you can see me there. <laughs> um, so, I've looked through all of the different books that I have on 20th century um, ruby colored glass, and I have not seen anything quite like this. So if anybody has any ideas as to what brand that is, what manufacturer that is, um, it'd be great for you to chime in in the comments, uh, because like I said, it doesn't quite match anything that I'm seeing. And here is another little puzzle. And um, maybe 
you all have some idea. So the decanter has a ruby top on it, um, but the actual decanter itself is completely clear. Um, this base, this is something that I put together with this base. This base is uh, an anchor hocking royal ruby. Um, and honestly, I'm not sure if these little glasses go with the decanter originally. Um, I picked those up together, but they may just have been coincidentally put together because it's such a, a natural combination. And then, like I said, I put it together with that uh, Royal Ruby base to make the whole set complete. But if anyone happens to know what this uh, decanter is, um, that would be another great thing to chime in and let me know. Well, thank you again for coming along with me and looking at some more of my Ruby glass collection. And, um, you know, I hope that you enjoy this one. Um, I appreciate you taking a look at it. And, um, you know, if you like this video, please hit the thumbs up. If you know someone else who would like it, then please share. And uh, if you would like to, subscribe to my channel. Although um, I will point out that the bulk of my videos are actually more food related rather than about dishes. Um, but these uh, dishes are something that I enjoy talking about as well. So um, that's it. Thanks. Bye.